We've got some Wii U and Nintendo Wii games to look at today on the Retro Hunting Adventures, and we'll be right back to do that after these words from Mega Ran. Yo, this is Mega Ran. And you need to rock and or roll on over to Mr. Mega Man Fan's YouTube channel, because it's all that rush. To make it happen. Peace! <laughs> I'm your host, Mr. Mega Man Fan, and my quest to complete the North American Nintendo Wii U set continues. I've already gotten most of the hard hitters except for this one, Game and Wario. This one took quite the adventurous route to get here. I bought it from Canada. It traveled all the way to Puerto Rico for God knows what reason. Then it got rerouted back to Nebraska. At least the box and disc seem to have survived the trip in good shape, and they better have for what I spent to get this one. For whatever reason, even though Wario is a popular character, his games, many of the entries in his series, just don't sell. And as a result, they go for high dollar amounts when they go back on sale in the secondary market. This one fetches between... 50 and $60 complete in the box. A little less if you're willing to settle for just a disc, but to me that defeats the point of trying to complete a North American Wii U collection. I'm getting every one of these games in the box. And the other reason this one probably didn't sell that well is a lot of people accused it of being a ripoff of Nintendo Land. It's like, okay, you can play mini games or you can play mini games with a Wario skin on the top. So. I suspect a lot of people just skipped this one because they thought it's just Nintendo Land with Wario. Moving on to something a little less expensive, actually a lot less expensive, $5.99 for Guitar Hero Live. That's probably because it doesn't come with the guitar, just the game disc and instructions in the case, but I can probably pick up any USB Guitar Hero controller since everything that plugs into Wii U is USB. I'll have to find that out a little later on. The good news is the disc appears to be working right out of the box. The bad news is this is another one of those Wii U games that requires a day one update. And let's see how long I'm going to spend downloading this one. Come on, Nintendo. Get past the loading screen. As Big D would say, it's twirling, it's twirling. Big shout out to Emperor Big D and Geekdom 101. It's still estimating the time this is going to take. Come on, how long? As it turns out, it was a full six minutes. It starts out estimating it at three, but it actually lengthened as I was doing it to six. And then it took another two minutes to install the update once it finished downloading, so... I've skipped all of that for your benefit as well as mine because I don't think I could BS for 8 full minutes. And it is a working game, but without a guitar controller, I'm not going to be able to play the game. And I suspect even if I did play the game, I would have to mute all of the audio because it would be tracks from popular artists that we would all know and recognize, so I'd get flagged way up the wazoo by YouTube from various artists staking a claim to the video. No thanks, Samuel. I'm not willing to do that. So I'm just settling for the fact that we're proving it is a working game. Even though the gamepad just doesn't have anything to display right now. Not very interactive, Activision. You have dual displays and you can't even be bothered to use both of them. Not like they're the only ones though. A lot of developers don't really utilize it that well. Here's another cheap game that I picked up, Just Dance Kids 2014. Once again, complete in the box, disc, manual, everything inside the case as it should be, and the disc appears to be in good enough shape, but I always test these because you just never know with used games. You have to be sure. Happily for this one, there were no updates to download at the start. Just plug and play, so to speak. Pop in the disc, it starts up, you are in the world of Just Dance Kids 2014. Once again, another Ubisoft Just Dance game. Oh, Ubisoft. 
well, there's going to be copyrighted music in this too, just like Guitar Hero or any other in the Just Dance series of games. So I don't think I'll be showing you the gameplay, even if I had a Wiimote set up. We're moving on here. Sorry, copyright is a bitch. And speaking of things that are a B word, Just Dance 2014 turned out to be just a complete bust. Now it looks good initially. There's the instructions, there's the disc. Let's flip it over. And what I didn't realize is those scratches that you can see reflecting are actually deep into the groove. No pun intended on dancing. I thought it would work, but this is what happened. This is why you need to check your disc-based games. Thankfully, I had another one to move on to, Monster High New Ghoul in School, but I was definitely not pleased that I was going to have to return Just Dance 2014. I even tried cleaning it with a soft microfiber cloth and a tiny little bit of liquid just to get off any dust or dirt, but it did not help. The worst part is that you just can't resurface Blu-rays, and Wii U games are Blu-rays. With CDs and some DVDs, you can get away with trying to polish out scratches in the grooves, but not with Blu-rays, because that surface layer of the disc is very sensitive. You mess it up, you're basically wiping the data right off the disc, so do not try to resurface a Blu-ray, or you're making a very expensive Frisbee. Now here's what I know about Monster High. It was a set of toys made by Mattel that had an accompanying YouTube web series from 2010 to 2015 with a second series slash reboot to follow after that. Never watched it though, just bought the game because I needed another Wii U game. We're out of new Wii U games to test since Just Dance 2014 was a bust, but there's one more thing we can put in the Wii U and that's Rec Room Games for the Wii. A $3 shovelware title that, if it works, I'm happy with. I didn't have to spend a lot to get it, so even if it's bad, it's still good. While we're waiting for the Wii U to switch over to Wii Mode, I'll tell you that the games I picked up from Trade Post were $44 in total because I had some Trade Post credit, so I got $6 off. And then, ironically, I ended up returning Just Dance 2014, so $10 went back onto my Trade Post card. For a future purchase. So now I've got $10 in credit to burn the next time I find a Wii U game there that I don't already have. And that's sort of my attitude about bargain bin games like Rec Room games. If I don't already have it and it's only a few bucks or less, I'll pick it up. Always look through the bargain bins. You never know what you might find. I know somebody in Nebraska Nintendo who recently found a complete box copy of Animal Crossing for GameCube for $1.00 at a thrift store. And just like my copy of World Series of Poker, it had the memory card inside. So that alone made it worth the purchase price, let alone the fact that Animal Crossing goes for way more than that. So you always have to look. You never know when somebody might throw something in a bargain bin at a game store or a thrift store and have no idea of the value. In fact, I saw a video recently about a limited edition console a 3DS that was made to promote Puzzle and Dragons for 3DS that had Miyamoto's signature on it, and the game store that bought it in thought that was a smudge. They didn't even realize that it was a limited edition, let alone that it was autographed. They sold it to someone for 150 bucks, and the person who got that got the deal of a lifetime. I believe there were only four Puzzle and Dragon 3DS made in total. So one of four that's signed by Shigeru Miyamoto, no less, went for 150 bucks. Holy crap. As you can see here, I've got a skee-ball game on Rec Room Games. And at first, I didn't even know how to time my throw. I figured it was going to be like Wii Sports where you had to use some force and momentum, but literally no. You don't even use the motion controls of your Wiimote. You just aim 
and hold the B button to increase your power. And when you let it go, that's your throw. You don't even use a throwing motion with your arm whatsoever. So yes, this is fitting for a bargain bin game because my expectations have been significantly lowered just by playing skee-ball. And this isn't even a great version of skee-ball because your goal here is to get exactly 320 points to win, not to get the highest score you can in a limited amount of throws like skee-ball at Dave & Buster's or any other arcade. You get like nine balls, score as many points as you can, and the game is over. No, they expect you to score exactly 320 points to win with no throwing force you just aim and release the button in fact this is so dumb easy that i'm not even aiming i'm just releasing the ball and letting it land in any of the high value targets like i just hit 50 there with no effort whatsoever and i just hit 40 with almost no effort whatsoever so all I need to do is hit 10 three more times and I win the game. I suppose if you had a player two playing this with you, it would be a little more exciting because then at least you'd each be trying to get the 321st. But playing against the computer here, it feels totally pointless. And I'm guessing they call it Alley Ball because Ski Ball must be a trademark and they don't have the rights to it for a party game collection. <sighs> well, like I said, three bucks, not going to complain because it was cheap. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan, and as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time for more retro hunting adventures.